They're melted, they're precious, and they reveal remarkable stories. Here are 11 objects that survived the fire. This object is hard to recognize, not only because it's melted, but because it's something we don't use much anymore. This is actually a ball of watch chains. So back in the day you had pocket watches and these are all of the chains of those watches that have been fused together in the fire. As the fire swept through the city, someone buried this plate for safekeeping. What you see here with the gray and pink discoloring is actually the result of straw that was laid on top of the object to protect it from the fire. This opened the door to a building that's long gone. We had numerous buildings, as you can imagine, that were destroyed in the fire. So now you had a large number of keys to buildings that no longer existed. The History Museum has a few fragments of the bell from Chicago's old courthouse. When the building was consumed by the fire, the bell came thundering to the ground. Entrepreneurs later came along and sold it off in pieces. Often those pieces were fashioned into other sort of keepsake and mementos. We have two of them here. One is a miniature bell itself, and the second is a miniature fire helmet. There's another relic of the courthouse nearby in Lincoln Park. This limestone finial stood on its roof. This is the most important building in the city. It's a building that was considered to be fireproof. This relic of the fire is right outside the History Museum, but it's not exactly on display. The blob is hidden in the bushes. It's believed to be a melted mess of tools and other objects from a hardware store. It was originally intended to be a commemorative marker for the fire so someone could see it and sort of be reminded of the fire. But it is so heavy that it has sunken into the ground over the course of time to where it's now virtually hidden. This doll belonged to young Elizabeth Richardson. She and her family lived on the north side, which was especially hard hit by the fire. As the fire was coming towards them, they could see large rolling clouds of fire leaping from building to building headed in their direction. When that's happening, you have to make very quick decisions about what to take with you. Many times you can only fit what you can carry in your hands. And I imagine that this doll was a prized possession of Elizabeth if she was willing to take it with her as her family fled from the fire. This relic was salvaged from a bakery. So here you have an example of some homemade Chicago cookies that literally became charcoal in the fire. And this was supposedly recovered from Catherine O'Leary's barn, where the fire started. This bell is allegedly from a Mrs. O'Leary's cow. We don't have any way of definitively proving that, um, but that is the legend. These fire alarm boxes were placed all over the city before the fire. It was a technologically advanced system, but it had one fatal flaw. Once that alarm was pulled, you couldn't actually tell which alarm box it was, so they sent the fire company to the wrong place. Right after the fire, this sign was displayed on the real estate office of William Kerfoot. William Kerfoot, who claimed that his little wood shack was the first building in the burned area ironically made out of wood and with a hand-painted sign that said all gone but wife children and energy the great fire looms large over chicago's imagination it's been the subject of books movies and works of art but these objects convey the story of the fire in a unique and powerful way I think it makes it real and tangible to have an object that you can look at and sort of see and touch and feel and say, this went through the fire. This was an object that belonged to a person who went through and survived and lived through the fire. I think there's a power in that human connection and that human story because these objects really sort of represent the lives of people who they belong to.